Yo, what's up, everyone? My name's Dave, and you suck at programming. Today, we're going to talk about why this one character is the bane of my existence when I'm dealing with Bash, okay? And what prompted this video is I get a lot of people talking about oh, using AI to generate Bash, or they have LLMs do something. Uh, LLMs are really good at showing this one syntax that is just wrong. Um, it works, but it may not work. I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you why it's a headache, okay? Because I've seen this code enough and I'm sick of it. Before we talk about that, let's talk about the actual principle under here that we're going to be talking about, which is parameter expansion. So here's a simple bash script. We'd say foo equals hello world. We're make, declaring a variable, no trickery there. And then we can use this beautiful syntax to set a new variable called bar. Bar will be set to whatever foo is set to, but we're going to replace every instance of hello with goodbye. Actually, no, we're gonna replace the first and only instance of hello with goodbye. If we had two slashes here, it would be every instance, but we only have one slash, so we're gonna replace hello with goodbye. No trickery there. We're gonna echo what foo is. We're gonna echo what bar is. We should get hello world and goodbye world. Look at that. I'm even telling you what we should get before we run it. And hey, our system is saying that makes sense. That's what we want. So what's the issue here? Let's talk about some HTML, okay? You may have seen something like this when it comes to encoding something for HTML. When you have HTML documents, less than signs mean something, greater than signs mean something, ampersands mean something. So let's talk about that. Imagine a string like this. Dave likes bash and Unix. We have less than, we have greater than, we have ampersands in there. If we want to make this safe for HTML, we have to escape some things. There'd be more than this. This is non-exhaustive. This is just an example. But we have our enc. This is for encoded string and we have our raw string. So ENC is for encoded. So we have our raw here. We're going to replace two slashes. So we're gonna replace every less than sign that we encounter with ampersand LT semicolon, okay? Makes sense. Then we're gonna reread that string and replace every single greater than with ampersand GT, cool. And then we're gonna replace every single ampersand with the ampersand symbol itself and then amp semicolon. So what happens when we run this script? Let's go ahead and run it and what do we get? Uh, what's the name of it? There we go. So we have our raw string looks like this. Okay, that makes sense. Dave likes the less than sign is still there, but instead of an ampersand, we just have this, but the less than sign is still there. The greater than sign is still there. This looks right. The less than sign is here that, so this is wrong. Something's clearly wrong here. Let's talk about it. So I just realized I somehow lost the O2 script. I'm gonna go ahead and write that real quick and we'll just edit this part out. All right, so let's take a look at this next script here that we have and has been here totally the whole time, didn't just pop into existence. We have O2 what here? So we have a slightly different string. We have Dave likes bash and Unix, A-N-D, no ampersand there. And we're going to change the word and for the ampersand, okay? So we're gonna again print the raw string and the encoded string. So let's go ahead and run that. And what do we get? We get the same thing. Why do we get the same thing? That seems super weird. Shouldn't we be changing the word and with the literal ampersand? Well, let me go ahead and visualize this for you in our next script, visualized. So let's change and, which we have right here, with hyphen hyphen ampersand, hyphen hyphen, just literal hyphens, no big trickery going on there. We run this and look at that. We have hyphen hyphen, the word and, and hyphen hyphen. That's because this character is special in bash, okay? Bash takes whatever was matched here and you can back reference it effectively. You can replace this with what was matched with the ampersand character. And a lot of people that give me, you know, AI generated code, they don't seem to know this. The LLMs don't seem to quite understand this. If you talk with them a little bit, they seem to pick up on it, but yeah, this is a problem. So what can we do about this? We can fix it. And the way we fix it is very simple. We just escape the ampersand. You could technically also quote it, but we're just gonna escape it here. And that's the only difference here. We just put a backslash in front of it to escape it. We go ahead and run that. And hey, look, that's awesome. We have a literal ampersand without anything going on. That was the change we made there to fix it. So what's the next one we have? We have HTML almost. And this is our first example with the HTML where we're gonna change the less than with a escaped ampersand, escaped ampersand, and escaped ampersand at the end. So let's go ahead and run that one. This one's called almost. Why is it called almost? Because look at that. We have an ampersand. No, we're supposed to have a less than there. We have an ampersand and then a less than. It's almost like there was an ampersand here and then we double encoded that ampersand. Is that what happens? Yes, that's exactly what happens. So how do we fix it? Super simple. We just change the order, okay? So we do the amp encoding first. We encode the ampersands first, and then when that happens, then we can safely encode everything else because we're using the ampersand character, which we already had to encode. So if we do that in this order, now we have a non-exhaustive HTML escape function. We still technically have to escape quotes and stuff like that, whatever. Uh, but look at this. We have ampersand less than, ampersand greater than, the actual ampersand here, less than, 
greater than. That's super useful. For some reason, LLMs seem to miss that you have to escape or quote this. Uh, so that's super fun. It's a little pet peeve of mine. But this is super useful when you match things in parameter expansion. You can use that string later with an ampersand. So when an ampersand has a special meaning in Bash and it also has a special meaning in HTML, it can get really hard to tease these things apart. So hopefully this helped you. Yo, and of course, want to give a shout out to my patrons over at Patreon. Thank you so much for your continued support. Check it out. 50 active members. Uh, that's insane over here. Okay, when I started my Patreon, I didn't expect anyone to sign up. Maybe one or two people. Uh, thank you so much for your continued support, guys. It's, it's super awesome. I think it's super cool that you guys sign up for this. So yeah, thank Thank you. If you want your name at the end of the video, go sign up for my Patreon. Link is right there. And uh, yeah, have a good one.